renamed the Orville New Horizons. We were kind of expecting lots of new planets, new places, but the feel of the show felt a bit more retrospective. You're revisiting old enemies like the Muffin and the Krill, and that all the characters are bringing back in, like Talea, even Lady Misa's character. So what was the reasoning behind that? I think, I think the New Horizons, we, we are meeting new, we are meeting new characters, like the Janice we, re, we referenced before, and right. kind of like Anson Bolivar and stuff, so I believe that there is that opportunity, but of course now we've been, so it feels that, you know, and obviously I didn't, I didn't write it, but as some of these characters <laughs> here, here in the park, there's a lot of, there's a lot of backstory, we have character development now, and that, and that sort of needs to be serviced, so... It, it's it's not like it was in season one where everything is just new and you're just introducing all over the place and everything is a fresh exploration. We have to we have to come back and sort of continue to evolve those stories and sometimes resolve those stories in order to you know, maybe in another season go and meet new and interesting you know, characters. New Horizons also meant a new ship. Mm -hmm. The ship was retrofitted with a new look, yeah. um, a new running time, which was perhaps the biggest change of all. Yeah. Yeah. And what, you, what you're seeing is all these feature length storylines with feature quality visual effects as well. But it's uh, the show has just really, that's to me anyway. What new meant. In some ways, it's metaphorical. Yeah. Well, then will we see a resolution to the Kalon storyline? Because obviously we'll that's the epic one. We'll still have two episodes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to watch. Call me up in about two weeks, no. and I'll tell you everything. Okay. <laughs> oh, sure. I was wondering if you could talk about the the long road to get to season three. You had this production pause uh, after uh, Fox said it was going to be delayed and then Hulu announced that they were picking it up and then COVID came and there were multiple stops, starts and stops with that. Did, did that at any way, in any way affect the, the storytelling the, that you had stuff in the can and then you had a break? Did, did it alter the story at all where you had a chance to look back on it and say, oh, well, we, maybe we should take it this direction? No, not, not, not at all. In fact, some of these scripts were written two and a half years ago. Uh, and we, the scripts were good. We, we filmed them and edited them as written. It was a coincidence that some of the stuff that, like the, the, there's a scene dealing with abortion in one of the episodes, that yeah. happened to air during the World Be Wait controversy. That was just a coincidence. That was written almost three years ago. So that was, we didn't go back. And, no. I will say two things that, that that did sort of alter is that we had, you know, when you're sitting in your home, you have a lot of time to work on the episode. So we basically treated them like features, you know, like sometimes the television, you can expand the television, you got to get them out, get them out, get them out. We poured over these things like, like basically like a, a movie. And, that, and then putting that detail in, it makes every single ounce of it was perfect, that's kind of why it's up on screen. That, I just that, realized, that's a good point. There is one thing we did, I think you either accepted, we did have uh, Leighton reference the pandemic, only be, and that was a that was a post pickup once we started shooting again, only because it was like two years out, and it would be very weird for not to say it. So organically we felt like, we weren't trying to be like, hey, let's talk about the pandemic, but organically we had to... Uh, Tom brings up a good point, which is... The, pan, the, the delays. These, these are not, as you can probably tell, they're not. They're not episodes that were cranked out on, on hideous TV deadlines. And it, it, you're right. It really does show. There's, there's, I've never been a part of a season of TV like this. Yeah. I mean, this show is so huge and it's so intricate. And I think ultimately, deeply moving. Uh, as a result, like the cumulative effect of all of these changes is you find yourself crying while watching the show. I do. Oh, I think we all do. Uh, yes. I don't think, I don't think, I think it's a cumulative effect of, of, of everything that's been done in the show. You are so, you feel it. I know, I, mean, I think, I think what we lost in, in, in delay and people sort of being impatient, we gained in 
the passion and the ability to, you know, we gained in, in production value and the passion ability to do what we wanted to do. So it was, it was not even a trade-off, I think it was an improvement. We, we talk a lot about post-traumatic stress, you know, from the fallout from the war. How did you approach arcing that as part of your season arc? Well, that was part of the season, that started in season one. Um, we wanted to have some, uh, we were introducing the Charlie character. And we wanted to um, show how the Kalon War, so often on these kinds of shows, there are space battles. It's clear that tens of thousands of people were killed, but you never really deal with it. And we wanted to show how one person carried that trauma with them. And also one of the children on board, their families on board. And so we wanted to show how one of the, the, the teenage boy was affected. Um, right out of the gate in, season, in uh, the first season. I, remember, I mean in the first episode. Oh, sorry, no. I remember, I really remember Ren and, and Seth and, and everybody talking about it. Once you saw the fan reaction, and also like that, that battle expanded in, in post-production. And so the scale of the, the, the death and discussion was even bigger. I mean it was great on the page, but once you saw it and... We realized we had to, to service it. Like it, it, it affected the fans. Like that, that we had made a turning point. So I think they responded to it, and that's why and, and it had to be addressed. One of the first questions that brought into the writers' room in season three was, if we're keeping Isaac on the bridge, we've got to deal with the fact that his species tried to wipe out all biology. Not everyone's going to be comfortable. We have to address this head on, and it gave us good stuff. And we were, I mean, I know you have that question, but we were aware of this in season two. We had to cut the, the golf, the deleted golf scene for time, and we were going to put it in like, episode nine, like right after. We realized totally they wouldn't be playing golf. We would be for that reason. Yeah, Isaac, they wouldn't be playing golf with Isaac and having a chuckle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After that. So. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.